Orcas are renowned for their shows in water parks, demonstrating their incredible agility and intelligence. However, it's vital to remember that these displays occur far from their natural habitat, the vast, open oceans. While shows can be entertaining, it's essential to recognize that captive orcas are a small fraction of the broader population. In the wild, some orcas exhibit unique features that are not common among the general population that surprise researchers and biologists. Join us as we explore the 15 most amazing orcas you have ever seen before. Number 15. Corkfin. Orcas usually have tall dorsal fins that can reach up to 6 feet. These fins serve as their navigational rudders, aiding in balance and maneuverability. But a peculiar orca has caught the spotlight due to its unusual appearance. This particular orca, affectionately called cork fin, has intrigued researchers due to its distinct lack of a dorsal fin. Encountered by a group of scientists off the southern coast of Western Australia at just three months old, cork fin appeared to thrive, swimming comfortably alongside its family pod. The absence of its dorsal fin shocked experts, prompting various theories. One theory suggests a congenital genetic defect as the underlying cause, a straightforward yet plausible explanation. Alternatively, orcas may sustain dorsal fin injuries during childbirth, where assisting family members occasionally pull on the emerging calf. While they intend to assist, accidents can transpire, leading to the eventual loss of the dorsal fin. Corkfin's condition from an early age offers adaptability and a relatively normal life trajectory. This adaptation might necessitate modified swimming techniques, but it ensures a promising future. For adult orcas, however, losing their dorsal fin poses a more substantial challenge, potentially endangering their lives. An adult orca would have to relearn swimming techniques, rendering it vulnerable and often hungry during this adjustment phase. Number 14. False orcas. Typical orcas reach lengths of up to 30 feet and weigh more than 11,000 pounds. These powerful marine mammals exhibit significant size and weight, with males generally larger than females. Their remarkable size and strength make them apex predators in the oceanic food chain, but the false killer whales, often recognized by their heads sticking out of the water and spotless bodies, differ significantly in size from their more famous cousins the regular orcas. Males reach lengths of about 20 feet, weighing approximately 3,300 pounds, while females reach up to 16 feet and weigh around 2,200 pounds, which is a wide margin when compared to other orcas. The false killers are known for their pleasant and friendly nature. However, their social behavior can sometimes lead to unexpected situations, such as mass strandings, where entire groups follow a single fish to shallow waters. A particularly intriguing behavior was observed in a group of orcas when an adult female playfully wore a dead salmon as a hat on her nose. What began as an unusual occurrence quickly turned into a peculiar trend. Over the next five to six weeks, this behavior spread like wildfire among orcas in her group and even across two others, with multiple individuals sporting the same fishy headgear. However, this curious trend vanished as suddenly as it began, except for a few isolated instances the following summer. Number 13, Ben. Ben's unique appearance tells a remarkable tale of survival. He's an orca who has defied death twice, his scars bearing testament to his daring adventures. Ben, albeit unintentionally, has become an icon for adventurers. Scientists do not specifically study his scars, Instead, Ben's frequent appearances in photographs provide a clear identifier. This has proven invaluable for researchers tracking whales in New Zealand's waters and measuring their impressive migratory distances. The saga began in 1997, as recounted by Dr. Ingrid Visser, the founder of the Orca Research Trust. Then, Ben found himself stranded on a beach near Monga, just north of Auckland. A distressing fate awaited, but Dr. Visser's intervention successfully returned Ben to the sea after 21 hours. Sadly, the following year brought more misfortune. Ben was sighted with a severe injury to his dorsal fin resulting from a collision with a boat. Experts were deeply concerned as this injury, affecting a vital body part for a marine hunter like Ben, could have been fatal. The odds were against him, and many questioned his survival. Nonetheless, Ben displayed exceptional resilience, since that fateful injury, he has been spotted over 140 times in various regions of New Zealand. 
Despite his ailment, he has covered a staggering distance of at least 24,800 miles, akin to swimming worldwide. Number 12. Stumpy. Not only can the fin affect the orca's navigation, balance, and maneuverability, but the mammal's back can affect them, too, as evidenced in the case of Stumpy, a resident of the waters off Norway. Stumpy possesses a unique and poignant story. His affliction primarily affects his back, making it noticeably more strenuous to maneuver his tail underwater than other species members. Born around 1995 or 1996, Stumpy's initial interactions with researchers unveiled an unconventional circumstance. During the first encounter, Stumpy was observed with his mother, swimming separately from a pod of other orcas, a situation far from the norm. However, the peculiarity of Stumpy's situation only deepened from that point onward. Stumpy's fate was uncertain, and it was widely presumed that he had not survived the trauma. This was not a reflection of doubt in the resilience of the young orca, but rather an acknowledgement of the extreme nature of his injuries, which made survival seem improbable. To the researchers' astonishment, it was later confirmed that Stumpy had endured. What is particularly intriguing is Stumpy's extensive travel despite his debilitating injuries. He consistently followed and associated with different pods of orcas, as his ability to hunt for food independently was severely compromised. During this time, Stumpy relied on the assistance of previously unfamiliar orcas, an occurrence of rare altruism within the animal kingdom. In 24, scientists made an astonishing observation regarding Stumpy's feeding habits. He was witnessed partaking in a meal alongside a group of orcas, with two of his kind graciously bringing him herring. Stumpy kept a distance from the main feeding area, where food was delivered to him. Moreover, some of the other orcas took on roles as his protectors, serving as his guardians. Attaching Stumpy in a boat proved challenging, as his fellow orcas swiftly guided him away from potential threats. Number 11. T-Pod T-Pod, one of the three constituent pods within the southern resident community of orcas, is a fascinating and highly studied group of marine mammals. These southern resident pods, including J and K pods, are a unique and cherished part of the Pacific Northwest's marine ecosystem, known for their complex social structures, familial bonds, and dietary preferences. Like its counterparts, T-Pod is easily identifiable by the alphanumeric system researchers use to track individual members. Each orca within the southern resident community is assigned a specific alphanumeric designation for research purposes, allowing for detailed monitoring of their lives and behaviors. These designations are used alongside descriptive names to create a comprehensive catalog of each orca's characteristics, lineage, and age. These orcas are unique in their dietary specialization, primarily focusing on Chinook salmon. This dietary preference underscores their role as apex predators within the ecosystem and their dependence on healthy salmon populations for survival. Orcas consume fish and marine mammals like seals, sea lions, and even other cetaceans. Their remarkable adaptability and hunting strategies contribute to their status as apex predators in various marine ecosystems. Number 10. Keiko. Domestication negatively impacts orcas, both in captivity and due to human interactions. In captivity, orcas suffer from psychological stress, physical health problems, shorter lifespans, and social disruption. They are often used for entertainment, performing tricks that further stress them. In the wild, human activities, such as boat traffic and pollution, disrupt their natural habitats and hunting patterns. Historically, capturing wild orcas for the entertainment industry led to declining populations. Recognizing these harmful effects has prompted conservation efforts and regulations to protect orcas and their natural environments, emphasizing the importance of ethical treatment and preservation of these magnificent marine mammals. Keiko, the beloved killer whale who famously played the role of Willy in the movie Free Willy, embarked on an incredible journey of liberation and restoration. Captured in Iceland at the tender age of two, Keiko's life dramatically turned when he was sold to a theme park in Mexico City. In this artificial environment, he performed for audiences in a pool at an astonishing 7,000 feet above sea level, enduring the burdens of being underweight and suffering from a skin disease. Keiko's plight did not go unnoticed, 
Thanks to the compassion of private donors, they made it possible for Keiko to be moved to a special aquarium in Oregon, where he was introduced to the natural seawater. There, he learned to eat fresh fish and was no longer compelled to perform for spectators. It was a crucial phase in his recovery. Once Keiko regained his health and was fit to return to the ocean, an extraordinary journey began. He was transported on a C-17 cargo plane rented from the U.S. Air Force, deemed in the nation's best interest. Keiko's birthplace in Iceland awaited him, offering the promise of swimming in the open ocean and the potential for a reunion with other killer whales. Upon his arrival in Iceland, Keiko was placed in a bay pen where he could acclimate to his new surroundings. When he was released from his stretcher, he wasted no time and dived into the water, circling the pool in exhilaration. He was allowed to explore the seafloor, rekindling his connection with a natural environment he hadn't experienced for two decades. Keiko was diligently taught to exit the enclosed bay and follow a boat, enabling him to embark on open ocean journeys. The hope was that he might recognize his family or their dialect, potentially reuniting with other whales. In a remarkable turn of events, Keiko swam away with a pod of killer whales in the summer of 2002, journeying 800 miles toward Norway. After eight weeks, his caregivers confirmed that he had thrived in the ocean environment, living more than five years with the opportunity to be free again. Keiko's extraordinary odyssey from captivity to the open ocean is a testament to the power of human compassion and the resilience of nature. His story is a poignant reminder that, given the chance, animals can find their way back to the wild, and the taste of freedom is a precious gift. Number 9. Tilikum Orcas, despite their social and seemingly friendly nature, are unequivocally wild animals. Their inherent instinct, intelligence, and physical capabilities remain intact. While interactions with humans may give the impression of obedience, orcas are powerful predators with the capacity for aggression. Their sheer size, speed, and sharp teeth underline their potential danger. Though rare, attacks on humans and even fatal incidents are stark reminders of their wild nature. One typical example is the story of Tilikum. The notorious male orca's tragic and controversial life story captivated the world. Known for his involvement in multiple fatal attacks on humans, he symbolized the ethical dilemmas surrounding keeping wild animals in captivity. Tilikum's journey began when he was just two years old, captured off the coast of Iceland with two other young orcas from his pod. He was initially held at Sealand of the Pacific, a public aquarium in Canada, where he performed in shows, leaping from the water to entertain crowds. To the unsuspecting visitors, it seemed like a joyful spectacle. But behind the scenes, trainers noticed signs of aggression among the captive orcas and a habitat lacking in stimulation. Tragedy struck at Sealand when 20-year-old Kelty Byrne slipped and fell into Tilikum's enclosure. In a shocking and violent event, Tilikum and two other orcas attacked her, resulting in her accidental drowning. This incident led to the closure of Sealand, and Tilikum was subsequently sold to SeaWorld in the United States. Tilikum became a star attraction at SeaWorld, performing under Shamu. Some trainers were unaware of his violent history, but extra precautions were always taken. Despite the tragic incident at Sealand, the park continued to use him in their shows. The darkest chapter in Tilikum's story unfolded on February 24, 2010, during a Dine with Shamu show. Senior trainer Dawn Brancho was pulled into the water when her ponytail touched the pool's surface, and Tilikum launched a deadly attack. Brancho fought for her life in front of a horrified audience, but the orca's relentless assault led to her tragic death. This high-profile tragedy prompted significant changes at SeaWorld, including fines and safety measures. The 2013 documentary Blackfish further intensified the scrutiny on captive orcas and their living conditions. The film alleged that Tilikum's violent behavior resulted from captivity-related stress and a lack of stimulation. The public outcry that followed led to changes in the law and, ultimately, a shift in SeaWorld's practices, ending breeding orcas in captivity and discontinuing theatrical shows. Number 8. Granny Orcas are known for their relatively long lifespans, particularly in the wild. The typical lifespan of a wild orca can range from 50 to 80 years or even longer, depending on their specific ecotype, available food sources, and environmental conditions. 
In contrast, orcas in captivity tend to have shorter lifespans. The stress, limited space, and the absence of natural behaviors in captivity can lead to various health issues, resulting in a reduced lifespan. In captivity, the average lifespan of an orca is significantly shorter, often ranging from around 20 to 30 years. In the heart of the Salish Sea, a place known for its serene beauty and enchanting marine life is the remarkable story of Granny, a centenarian orca who has transcended time, captivating scientists and the public alike. As captured in the environmental awareness documentary, The Hundred-Year-Old Whale, Granny's journey symbolizes the interconnectedness of human actions and the fate of the planet's most majestic creatures. Granny, an iconic matriarch, leads her pod of southern resident orcas, and her longevity is a testament to the resilience and adaptability of these creatures. Born in 1911, Granny's life spans multiple generations, witnessing seismic shifts in the world and her natural habitat. She represents not only the wisdom of her species, but also the tragic history of orcas worldwide. She was once captured by hunters, motivated by profit, who violently captured these majestic beings. But her captures thought that her capture was lucky, as she was considered too old for a life in captivity. In contrast, her pod members were taken away, setting the stage for the burgeoning marine park industry. She is missing and presumed dead because researchers have not sighted her dorsal fin. Number 7. Oreo Oreo is a distinctive and unique member of the southern resident killer whale community, which resides along the coasts of Washington State and British Columbia. What sets Oreo apart from the rest of this critically endangered population is his remarkable pigmentation. Named after the famous cookie due to its striking appearance, Oreo boasts a striking black and white coloration that resembles the well-known treat. His dorsal fin and eye patch are particularly prominent and exhibit a striking contrast against his predominantly white body. This unique pigmentation makes him instantly recognizable among the Southern residents. As a young member of the Southern resident community, Oreo has been closely monitored by researchers and conservationists. His distinctive appearance and individual characteristics contribute valuable data to the ongoing efforts to study and protect this endangered population. Number 6. Type B1 Type B1 orcas, also known as Gerlache Strait orcas, are a distinct ecotype of orcas found in the cold and pristine waters of the Antarctic. These orcas are characterized by their striking appearance, particularly the large eye-catching eye patch that sets them apart from other orca ecotypes. The most prominent feature of the Type B1 orca is the distinctive white eye patch that stands out against their dark gray to black coloration. This eye patch, located just behind the eye, gives them a unique and easily recognizable appearance. It is believed that this eye patch may serve a role in communication and identification within their social groups. Gerlachus Strait orcas inhabit the challenging and frigid environment of the Antarctic, where they have adapted to the extreme conditions of icy waters. They are known for their strength and agility, capable of navigating through sea ice and hunting for their primary prey, which includes seals and penguins. These intelligent predators often work together in coordinated efforts to capture their prey, showcasing the highly developed social structure within their pods. Unlike other orca ecotypes, the type B1 orcas do not typically feed on marine mammals like other seals or whales. Instead, they have developed specialized techniques for hunting seals on ice floes and preying on penguins in the water. The Gerlaca Strait orcas are known for their strong family bonds and cooperative behavior, making them a fascinating subject of study for marine biologists and researchers. Before we continue the video, let us have our subscribers pick for today. In the image on your screen, there appears to be a captured orca. Orcas have a long history of captivity that dates back many decades. The practice of capturing these marine mammals for entertainment purposes has been a source of controversy and concern. One notable example of an orca that endured capture and a life in captivity is Granny. This orca, believed to have been born in the early 1910s, was a member of the southern resident killer whale population in the waters off British Columbia and Washington State. In the mid-20th century, it looked like a normal orca, until someone caught it for display in marine parks, enduring a life of captivity. 
In the 1960s, she was taken from her natural habitat and sold to an aquarium, where she performed in shows and coped with the challenges of confinement. The 1970s marked a turning point when growing ethical concerns led to increased activism and regulations advocating for improved treatment of captive orcas. Granny witnessed this shift in attitudes towards captivity and outlived the era of commonplace orca captures. Despite her history of captivity, she defied the odds and lived well beyond the average life expectancy for her species, estimated to be over a century old. As a marine conservationist, how would you reshape the future for captive orcas, taking into account the lessons from their challenging past? Share your opinions with us in the comment section below. Number 5. Corkscrew This adult male orca was spotted in the waters of New Zealand. His fin looks like a zigzag and he was nicknamed Corkscrew. The zigzag fin orcas, often referred to as kinked or bent fins, have a dorsal fin that deviates from the norm, taking on a distinctive zigzag shape. While most orca dorsal fins are straight and erect, the fins of these unique individuals exhibit various angles, bends, and curves that create a zigzag pattern. This unusual feature makes them easily identifiable among their pod members and has piqued the interest of researchers. Some experts believe that the zigzag fin could be attributed to genetics, while others speculate that it may be a result of environmental factors such as diet, pollutants, or injuries during early development. One possibility is that a genetic mutation is responsible for the distinctive dorsal fin shape. These mutated genes may be passed from one generation to the next, creating a lineage of zigzag fin orcas within a specific pod. While this theory has some merit, it doesn't account for why only certain individuals within a pod exhibit zigzag fins. Another theory suggests that injuries sustained in early life may lead to the development of a zigzag fin. Orcas are known to be highly active and occasionally engage in aggressive behaviors, even within their pods. An injury to the dorsal fin during such interactions could potentially result in the fin's unusual shape. However, this theory also leaves many questions unanswered, as not all injured orcas develop zigzag fins. As the research continues, scientists are trying to determine the role that environmental factors play in the development of zigzag fins. Number 4. Port Jackson Orca Orcas possess powerful, versatile jaws with large, conical, and interlocking teeth designed to hunt and secure prey. With 40 to 56 teeth, orcas demonstrate adaptability in their diet, preying on fish, seals, sea lions, and other marine species. Their cooperative hunting strategies, often involving pod collaboration, showcase the effectiveness of their jaws in capturing various prey types. Beyond hunting, orca jaws are vital for communication, as they produce clicks, whistles, and calls, facilitating social interactions within pods. Understanding the mechanics of orca jaws sheds light on the intricate balance of marine life and underscores the significance of preserving these apex predators and their ecosystems. These remarkable creatures exemplify nature's design and emphasize the importance of marine conservation for the well-being of our oceans and their inhabitants. The Port Jackson orca is a unique and distinctive individual among the orca population. What sets this orca apart is its jaw's severe and unmistakable deformity, marking it as an extraordinary and instantly recognizable member of its species. The most striking feature of the Port Jackson orca is its jaw, which deviates significantly from the typical streamlined orca profile. Instead of the sleek, powerful jawline that characterizes these apex predators, this orca's jaw is visibly and profoundly deformed. The distortion is so pronounced that it has earned the nickname Port Jackson Orca, reflecting the location where it was initially spotted. This deformity poses a host of challenges for this remarkable orca. While orcas rely on their formidable jaws to grasp and consume prey, this individual must adapt to its unique condition. The precise cause of this deformity remains speculation, with theories ranging from genetic mutations to traumatic injuries sustained during its life. Despite its jaw's conspicuous deformity, the Port Jackson orca demonstrates remarkable resilience. It navigates the challenges posed by its condition with impressive adaptability. 
Instead of hunting in the traditional orca manner, which often involves cooperative teamwork to capture prey, this orca has developed unconventional hunting strategies to compensate for its disability. Number 3. Antarctic Orcas Type 90 orcas, also known as Antarctic orcas, are a remarkable and unique ecotype of Orcinus orca that inhabit the frigid and pristine waters of the southern ocean surrounding Antarctica. These orcas possess distinct characteristics and behaviors that set them apart from other orca ecotypes, making them a subject of fascination and research. One of the defining features of Type 90 orcas is their striking appearance. They typically have a grayish-blue hue with a well-defined, slightly larger white eye patch behind their eyes. This eye patch is not as prominent as the ones seen in other orca ecotypes, but it still adds to their distinctive appearance. Their coloration is believed to be an adaptation to their icy environment, providing camouflage while hunting and allowing them to blend in with the surrounding sea ice. Type 90 orcas have developed unique hunting strategies and specialized prey preferences, reflecting their adaptation to the challenging Antarctic ecosystem. They prey primarily on cold water marine species, such as Antarctic toothfish and icefish. They employ cooperative hunting techniques to capture these elusive prey, using their intelligence and communication skills to work together effectively. The social structure of Type 90 orcas is complex, mirroring other orca ecotypes. They live in matrilineal family groups, with females forming strong bonds and males remaining closely associated with their mothers throughout their lives. These family units often work together to hunt and care for their young, exhibiting the highly evolved social behavior for which orcas are known. Number 2. Iceberg The Russian white orca, also known as the iceberg, is an enigmatic and captivating member of the Orcinus orca species. What sets iceberg apart from its fellow orcas is its unique and extraordinary coloration, which has earned it the nickname the white orca. This remarkable creature was first spotted in the waters of the Russian Far East, in the North Pacific, and has since become a subject of great interest and admiration among researchers and enthusiasts worldwide. Orcas are easily recognizable by their striking black and white coloration. Their bodies are primarily black, with white patches and areas, including their underbellies and the sides of their faces. This distinct black and white contrast serves multiple purposes. From above, their dark coloration helps them blend into the ocean's depths when viewed from below, making them stealthy predators. The white patches may serve as camouflage when seen from below by prey. Additionally, this coloration and their striking appearance make them iconic and easily identifiable, both in the wild and in captivity. Iceberg's striking appearance is defined by its predominantly white coloration, which is exceptionally rare among orcas. While many orcas exhibit distinctive black and white patterns, Iceberg's unique pale complexion stands out, giving it an almost ethereal quality. Its striking white skin is thought to result from leucism, which causes a reduction in pigmentation in the skin and other body tissues, distinct from the albinism seen in pure white animals. Beyond its exceptional appearance, Iceberg's social and ecological roles are equally intriguing. The Russian white orca is known to be part of a pod of typical black and white orcas, which adds a layer of complexity to the social dynamics within its group. The interactions and relationships between Iceberg and its fellow pod members are a subject of ongoing research. While the Iceberg's unique coloration has made it a focal point of scientific study and public fascination, it has also brought attention to the conservation challenges facing orcas and marine life in the North Pacific. Understanding and protecting icebergs and their pod members is critical for the well-being of these magnificent creatures and for preserving the fragile balance of the marine environment. The Russian white orca reminds us of the ocean's beauty and mysteries, calling for our attention and care to ensure a future where these extraordinary beings continue to grace our waters. Number 1. K-Pod Researchers' unique alphanumeric system recognizes K-Pod to identify individual orcas within the southern resident community. Each member of K-Pod is given a specific number to facilitate research and conservation efforts. These numbers are used alongside descriptive names, allowing researchers to build a comprehensive profile of each orca, including their age, lineage, and unique physical traits. 
The southern resident orcas, including K. pod, are known for their close-knit family bonds and complex social structures. These pods are led by matriarchs, older females who play pivotal roles in maintaining cohesion and knowledge transfer within the group. Like the other two southern resident pods, K-Pod relies heavily on these familial bonds and cooperative hunting strategies to thrive in their shared ecosystem. The members of K-Pod, like all southern resident orcas, primarily feed on Chinook salmon, a species of great importance to the Pacific Northwest's ecosystem. This dietary specialization has made these pods vulnerable to declining salmon populations, pollution, and habitat degradation. The study of K-Pod and other southern resident pods is about understanding a particular species and the broader implications for marine conservation. These orcas serve as important indicators of the overall health of the Pacific Northwest's marine environment, including the vitality of salmon runs, water quality, and human activities' impact on marine ecosystems. The protection and preservation of K-Pod are paramount for their well-being and the health and balance of the entire marine ecosystem. Conservation efforts, habitat restoration, and sustainable fishing practices are essential to ensuring a bright future for these magnificent creatures and the ecosystems they call home. K-Pod symbolizes the interconnectedness of all life in the Pacific Northwest's marine environment and highlights the urgency of responsible environmental stewardship. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.